everybody, it's Matt from Eastwood Company. We're here in the Eastwood garage doing another live tech session. Uh, for anybody that hasn't watched one of these before, we try to make them as interactive as possible. So please log in, uh, join the chat. Uh, over here we have Randy who does a lot of our videos as well. He's manning the live chat. He's going to answer any questions you may have uh, immediately and he's going to keep a few of them and drop them over to me that I can answer live on camera uh, about today's topic. So uh, today we're talking about cutting tools. Uh, just a couple of sheet metal cutting tools that I like to use and probably get the most use around the shop here and at my home shop as well. Um, the, the one that, the, that is the least mobile, but probably I use the most, uh, is our throatless she shear here. Now this today is on the home page. If you happen to hit our home page, we're having our, our daily deal on this particular tool. It's 10% off, free shipping you get on this tool. So it's a great time to grab one if you don't have one yet. So this shear, um, the way it works is it's kind of like a guillotine type setup here where the top blade here has a curve to it like this while the other one's uh, pretty flat. And when these blades come together, they basically shear off the metal and as you pull down on the handle. Now, the great thing about these are that you can cut curves and shapes within reason. You're not going to cut a, a 180 in this real easy, but uh, you can cut, cut curves just by kind of making the panel, um, pushing on the panel as you cut. So I'm making a curve one way. I can, I can turn the panel a little bit as we go. We make a little curve there like that guy there. So if we're just doing a wide curve, that's what we would do. If you want to get a little more of a curve, you may have to flip. Uh, one little tip here is this piece, and I'll hopefully we can get on camera, uh, has a little distortion to it. You can see on the edges, it's curved up, it's bent. So your piece that would be what I call your drop, piece that you're not using, uh, when you use this shear, the throatless shear, it tends to, it puts a nice clean cut on the piece you're keeping, but it does tend to bend or, or uh, make your drop piece formed, uh, bent, if you will. And so what I like, like to do is if I'm cutting a piece out, so we'll cut another shape here. Say I want to cut this curve here. And I know that this piece right here, we want to have be our drop. So we want to put it in in a manner in which that piece is coming off. If we turn it the other way and I cut like this, uh, what's going to happen is our piece that we want to keep is going to end up getting quite deformed and then we're going to have to hammer and dolly that edge and straighten it out before we even start working it or fitting it to whatever we're working on. So if we want to keep if we want to make this our drop, we can put an X on it like that. That's what I like to do, just so I know. And then we can cut the piece and work it. Now, if you, if this piece, if it's more comfortable for you to say, turn the other way, what you can do is you can turn the piece over. And, and we're just eyeballing it for fun here today, but that's the edges. So we're gonna go. So we could just turn it over, again, there's our X piece on the other side. So if you're more comfortable turning that way, we can do that. So put it in there. Now what I like to do, and it is best to keep the accuracy, is you want to be working this back, uh, I'd say um, half or less of the jaw. Um, if you just cut straight and do a full cut here because of the way the jaw is curved, it's going to end up not giving you a straight cut. It's hard, a little harder to control. So what I like to do is I move the piece, I'll put it in, cut right on my line here. And I feed it in a little at a time. It gives you a, a little 
more control than if you're using the uh, use the whole blade. What will end up happening is once you get to the end, you're going to have to turn the piece a lot more. So I use that back part of the jolia. So we have our nice, uh, nice clean cut there. That's good for making the curves. So this tool, so that's just how it works. This tool out of the box, one thing I always like to address uh, any kind of tech stuff that I come across that I've seen before, or even in my own use of this. This tool right out of the box is a tool that um, needs to be adjusted. Uh, the tool has a lot of adjustment in it. There is an adjustment here for the blade in the front that you can loosen up. And then there's also that actually lets it loose. And then on the sides here, and I'm trying to think if you guys can get, probably tough to get a shot, but you can probably get these ones over here so they can see it. Um, there's some adjustment screws here on the side, which we're going to try and get in. So you're going to have to loosen this front bolt here just a little bit. So it's still snug, but a little loose. And on the side here, there's set screws that you can turn to adjust this blade. There's the same thing in here. But mainly, I, I do most of my adjusting with this blade here after this one's fixed, just because it's a little easier to do. So you can adjust this bottom part here so that you can get it cutting smoothly. Um, you need to also play with, you know, just making sure all these adjustments here are tight, how you like it so it's not flopping around. But mainly, you need to get this adjusted here. So a good test for setting it up is to use like a manila folder like this and set it up so that you can actually cut uh, a manila folder with the tool. That's how you know that you're adjusted pretty good. So this thing, you know, we can cut. I use this sometimes to cut templates when I'm making pieces like this from cutting a template. I'll use this for that. But then we can also then cut up to, um, it can comfortably cut 16 gauge. I've cut 14 gauge, even though they're probably going to yell at me for saying that, but you can, I have cut that. Oh, what's going to happen is it's going to decrease the, the life of your, of your blades here. So you need to make sure that they're oiled, they're clean. Um, but if you're going to start cutting a lot of heavy stuff that's uh, 14 gauge or thicker, um, this tool is going to have a little bit more trouble on it. You're going to need something that's maybe a little more heavy duty, but uh, for most fabrication you guys are doing in automotive use, 16 gauge and thinner, we're actually cutting shapes. This is great. Um, if you're starting to go something heavier, you may want to just use a bandsaw or uh, a plasma cutter, um, which is just as easy to, to use. But this guy, you know, for normal patch panel repair, 20 gauge, 18 gauge, even 16 gauge, it's great to use it. I use it all the time, and uh, I think I'm on five years on my set of blades I have right now, my one at home, and still cuts great. So that's a little bit about the adjustment. Make sure you're doing that if you get one of these. If you hit the, the daily deal today, which is 10% off, free shipping, if you hit that deal and you get one of these right out of the box, first thing you need to do is tighten up all these adjustment bolts here so you get them where you're happy, uh, where you get the play out of it that it's, you're happy with it. And then also you want to go ahead and adjust these blades Get them nice and tight so that they are cutting exactly how you want. Use the middle of the folder for your guide, and there you go. You're set up, you're cutting, and everything's great. So that's one cutting, cutting tool that I wanted to show. So if I was cutting, uh, if, you know, if I had a larger panel like this, or we wanted to cut a patch out of it, and I'm just going to cut um, a random shape here. So for whatever reason, we're going to cut that shape. I don't know why. That's what we're cutting. So a couple ways you can cut this piece out. Um, you can use electric shears. So if you're, if you're doing a big panel uh, where I can't get it into the, the shear, the threatless shear here, you may have to go out on the workbench, on the floor, whatever. Uh, the electric shears is a, is a better opportunity for that. Now this piece is small enough. I could do it in the threatless shear, no problem. Um, but a lot of times the panel might be much bigger or it's cumbersome to get it in there. You may need a helper. I'm usually working on one and don't have that. So what I like to do is this electric shear can cut curves, probably not as tight as the throatless shear can do, but it can cut curves. We can probably get fairly close here. But a little tip, 
don't focus on trying to, with the electric shear and one shot, cut right on this line. Because you want your trim line to be as, as perfect as you can make it when you're fitting it up to the panel. Uh, hopefully your template, for whatever reason you made that shape, is close. So you, you want to just cut it fairly close with the electric shear. Um, but don't focus on trying to cut right on that line. It's hard to control the electric shear to get a perfect um, file fit. Uh, you're not going to get that with the electric shear. I don't care how good you are. So try and cut it close. So I'm going to try and cut. I'm going to see if we can make this curve here. Um, you know, something like this. This one up here. So this is going to be our scrap in here. We're keeping this piece. So we're going to X just to keep my everything straight. So the electric shear, I'm going to show you in the camera up close here, has this little jaw. Uh, in the jaws, it's a little different than what you were seeing with the footless shear. So this has a center jaw here that goes up and down. A little mouth and it cuts and shears the metal. But we're just trying to get a shot so you guys can see how the blade works on this. And it does have a variable trigger, so I got it set real nice and slow here. So you can just go along nice and slow and controlled, or you can go super fast like that. So, but, but what happens with it's going to cut out the, the um, a, it's going to waste material about the, the thickness right here of this gap in the center. So you got to keep that in your mind if you're trimming that you uh, are going to pick one of these edges that you're going to watch as we're cutting it um, and you're not cutting into your, your piece. So again, I'm just using this to knock off most of the material. So we'll go nice and slow here. I'm curving with it. So I can tell I'm getting a little close there, so I'm going to come back the other way. Again, don't focus on trying to cut right on that line. That's our waste. We'll get that. So that little curly cue there, that's what comes out every time you cut with the electric shear, that particular electric shear. That's what you're going to get. So you have to keep in mind that you don't uh, cut too close or you could be cutting that much, uh, that extra bit off that you don't want. So you don't want to do that. So here's our good piece. Here's what we have left. So I want to take that line. I want to cut right on that line so I get a perfect fit on my panel. So I cut pretty darn close there. So now what you do to get as perfect of a cut as you can get is you take your just your hand shears here, aviation snips, and you use this to cut. Much more controlled. Your arm's gonna scream at you if you have a big a big cut to make, you're gonna feel it in your forearms. But you don't need to do your forearm workouts that day. Not that I work out, but that's what I tell myself. So as you can see, uh, if you guys haven't watched, if you want an in-depth video that's really, really killer about snips, um, Mike Phillips, Phillips Hot Rods and Custom, he, uh, he did a great video with us where he came in, went over uh, aviation snips and showed some cool tricks with them. Um, so he went more into that. But you need to pick a snip that is cutting in the direction that you want it to be. So you saw with this, with the green uh, handled ones here, it's cutting down for me. Depending on what I'm doing, I may want that, I may not want that, but since I'm going to go the other way, I'm going to twist that up. we we'll use the red handle ones and we'll show you what happens. Right on that same cut. Now it's going up here. So what I'm doing is I'm just using the tip of the, the, the outermost tip here. And I'm only cutting that a little bit. I'm not cutting using the whole width of the jaw because I want some accuracy here. So I'm just kind of taking a little bit of time. I'm kind of cutting right on the center of that line here. Now if we were doing something that was really crucial, uh, we'd probably use a scribe to 
scribe this and we'd cut the scribe line uh, because of the the um, the sharpie gives you up to an eighth inch line which so you could be depending how worn out your sharpie is you could be that far off so if I was doing something this was a patch panel I wanted it to be a um, a perfect fit I would probably use a scribe on this but I'm just showing you guys so the nice thing is we use those uh, electric shears to cut off the majority of this and what is left is only a sliver the wider or the fatter that you're trying to cut off with these uh, hand shears, the aviation snips, the more you're trying to cut off, the harder it is for your, your arm, your hand to cut because it's trying to curl all of that material there. So the smaller it is, the easier it's going to be to cut, the, more, the smaller the cut is. So this bit we have here isn't too bad, but if we went much more excess material, it was going to be a pain. You're going to be fighting it and really going to fill it in your arms. And it's probably just not going to want to cut for you. So there's our piece. Let me cut. I got a little sliver there where I, I started that cut. But So you can see the cut. Nice smooth cut. It's not bent. The edge isn't bent down. Make sure you have, you have a good Good snips that aren't worn out or tightened up and adjusted correctly. You'll get a nice clean cut like this where you're not going to actually have the edge bent down a little bit. Uh, these particular snips do have a serrated edge on them, so it does leave just a little, little tiny um, transfers that, those marks onto the piece. Those can be sanded. If you're filing this to fit or you're sanding this to fit perfectly, you'll probably take those off. It's not going to be an issue. Um, if you're working in aluminum, um, it, it could be a little bit of an issue, but more than likely that area where those serrated part is, when you sand this down to put it together and weld it together, you're going to sand that off or your, and your filler is going to probably go right into that and melt together. You won't even see it, won't be an issue. So that's a tip when you're making your panels, cut it either with the threatless shear or use the electric shears or we also have a pneumatic version of this. If you prefer uh, pneumatic tools, the pneumatic version is basically the same. Um, you can use one of these two tools, rough cut it, then come back with your snips and trim it to fit, and you'll get a perfect cut as long as your hands are steady every time. So that's all I got today for, for, the, uh, for the cutting tools. Also, nice feature for this one. Put your lock back in so you're not cutting your fingers off. But again, for anybody that missed it, uh, the threatless shear here, uh, it's 10% off, free shipping. It's on the main part of our website. You can check that out um, and get a deal on that. This is a must-have. Have this on the corner of my major workbench in every shop that I work in. Thanks, guys, for watching, um, and we'll catch you next time.